Good morning once again on this wonderful Easter morning, this uh, sunrise service. I wanted to uh, ask you a question that was asked to me this week as we go into our Bible study. The question was asked to me, Jason, what is your favorite thing about this resurrection morning? And so I wanted to share what my uh, kind of my viewpoint is on that. Along with that, I know that there's so many uh, things that maybe you have that is your favorite. So I want to ask you that same question. What is your favorite thing about Easter morning or that resurrection morning? Uh, you can post it in the comments on our Facebook page. Uh, you can post it on YouTube, however you want to do that. But I'm just kind of wondering what the favorite things might be. Uh, as we think about some of those things, you know, we can look at the, the beauty of how Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Jesus, uh, Joanna and many other women that were with them. Uh, they went to the tomb early that morning. They went and they seen the stone was rolled away. Uh, they seen that the, the, the tomb was empty. Uh, they seen that there was an angel in there that said, hey, go and tell all the disciples, Jesus is no longer here, but he's risen from the grave. There's just so much that is there you can pick to, to see that, man, there's a lot of favorite things. And the story, of course, goes on from there. Uh, but in that, as I was looking into it and, and kind of thinking about it myself, one of the things that I'm reminded of uh, is the stone itself. That wonderful resurrection morning when, again, the ladies uh, that were Jesus' disciples, they went that morning to uh, put spices on the body of Christ. Uh, and when they did, they found the stone was already rolled away. What we'll find as you look into it in, uh, in Mark chapter number 16, uh, verses 1 through 3, these ladies were all going toward the tomb. And they was walking there that morning. And as they were walking, uh, they had an important question. They said, who's going to roll that heavy stone away that we can get in? Uh, first of all, it was, it was rolled there by the soldiers. There's no way that we're strong enough that we, we can't do something like that. It was sealed, uh, you know, so, uh, so by the king's decree. So now what happens? How do we get in there uh, to, to deal with the body of Jesus? And what you'll find is that there was a great earthquake. An angel had came and rolled the stone away. And this is where it gets really interesting to me. You know, when the angel had rolled the stone away, and the Bible said that he sat on the stone, and he was there, and, and then uh, the laser came, they found the stone that was rolled away. And something that was said to them was, you know, why are you looking for the living among the dead? Jesus is alive. He's already risen. Now, this is an important factor in my particular thinking, and, and, and one of the things I really like about the story, the angel didn't roll the stone away so that Jesus could get out. He rolled the stone away so that we could get in and we could see that Jesus had truly risen from the grave. Man, what a wonderful, wonderful story that that is as you look into that, that the angel didn't have to roll the stone away for Jesus. You know, Jesus had already had all power in heaven and in earth. He'd already died, already went and paid for our sins in the grave. He'd already took our sins to the pits of hell and preached to those that were gone before. He'd already risen again by the power of God the Father. Now, this is so wonderful and so neat to look at because now we see this risen Jesus who is no longer there in the, in the tomb. We see this, this angel who had moved the stone and these women who had gone in and all of a sudden, man, what a shock factor it was to find out that Jesus was no longer in the grave. And what we see is that as, as they were, uh, the story continues, we see that they were told, uh, you know, Jesus is not here. Uh, he's already risen. Why don't you go and tell the disciples what happened? We'll find as you look through the Gospels and different things of that. Uh, and you can find this story, by the way, in Mark chapter number 16, verses 1 through 3, where the women were walking toward the stone. You can find as you go a little bit further in there, that same chapter of Mark, uh, chapter number 16, that they, they had went and told the disciples that they were told. And you know, the disciples didn't believe. So they went and they ran over there and they looked themselves and thought, man, you know, how in the world? What happened? Where's, where's Jesus? What's going on? We don't believe that that actually happened. And the Bible said that Peter was wondering in himself, in his own mind, what actually happened? I'm just at awe. I'm at shock of this, of this story. What, what in the world happened to Jesus? He didn't know. He didn't know what had happened. Jesus showed himself again to two of the disciples on the road to Emmaus. And as he did, he talked to them a little bit and, and, and they didn't even know who he was, couldn't recognize him. They were caught up in, in grief and bewilderment themselves of what had went on the last few event, uh, events throughout the last couple of days. And as they were walking with Jesus and talking with him, the Bible says he opened up the scriptures to them. And we find out a little bit later there in the, in the verses that, uh, you know, when he did, 
that their hearts had burned inside of them as they, they recognized the word of the living God, but had no idea that it was Jesus telling it to them. Then finally, he sat at meat with them, and, and he was going to continue on, but they invited him to sit and eat. So he did, and he broke the bread, and he blessed it, and that's when they figured it out. Man, this was Jesus. How come we didn't understand it or, or recognize it earlier? But you know what happened? They, they went back, and they told the disciples. And when they did, you know what the disciples did? Again, they didn't believe. Jesus, later on that same night, had showed up to the disciples, the Bible says, behind closed doors. They didn't open the door. He didn't have to knock. He just kind of appeared. And, you know, this is so neat because, again, it, 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 it revitalizes what has already gone on in the story, that the, the stone didn't have to be rolled away. Jesus was able to just come in through, through the wall, if you will, walk through the stone. He could walk through whatever is separating them from him. Walk right through it. You know, this is neat because one of the favorite things that I pull from the story is that no matter what walls that I have put up, that Jesus is the stronghold. Jesus is the rock between the hard place and me. Jesus can walk through whatever walls I've put up. He can walk through whatever problems I might be having, and he can reach me right where I am, even in the middle of my doubt, in the middle of my unbelief, in the middle of me not knowing left from right and my events of my life have left me confused and bewildered when everything around me has just gone to craziness and all of a sudden Jesus shows up in my room, in my heart of hearts. He shows up and says the same thing he did now that he did back then, which is, hey, don't be afraid. Peace be with you. Understand that I'm here. It's me. It's Jesus. Learn to recognize me. You know, he did that twice for the disciples. He did it that very day. So he had showed himself to, to the ladies. Um, they went back, told the disciples. They went and checked the tomb them, themselves. They didn't see anything. Uh, so they didn't know what to think about it. And then, they, you know, they went back to the, to the house that they were at. Jesus showed himself again that same day to the two that was walking to Emmaus. Uh, and then they came back and told the disciples. They still didn't know what to believe. Jesus showed up in the house and said, hey, it's me. Now it's time to believe. And he breathed the Holy Spirit on him. Well, you know, Thomas wasn't there. And the Bible talks about doubting Thomas. Eight days later, Thomas was there with the disciples in the same house, the same scenario behind locked doors. Jesus showed up again and said, hey, let me prove to you that it's me. You didn't see a ghost. You don't have to be afraid. Look at the scars in my hands. Feel where the, 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 the spear pierced me in the side. Let your hands be your guide. Know that I am Jesus of Nazareth, risen from the grave with all the power that God has given. You know, and he called them when he did that and said, go and preach this gospel. Go and tell this good news. Let people know what's going on. Later, he reaffirmed that as well when he was rising and he told everybody, go ye and baptize. You know, go and teach all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and I'll be with you always, even to the end of the world. Boy, what is my favorite thing about Easter? Obviously, it's knowing that I have salvation through Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. What is my favorite thing about Easter, the whole story, all in general? You know, but one thing for sure that sticks out to me this day, this time, on this resurrection morning, is knowing that the stone didn't have to be moved so Jesus could get out. That stone had to be moved so that I could get in so that I could see for myself that Jesus is the risen Savior. Boy, what a powerful ministry. What a powerful ministry that the angels themselves were in, that the, the disciples all were told about, you know, and, and that you can reassure yourself with today that the stones that are in your life, the places that are immovable, the places that are of doubt, the places that, that you have come up against all these years and you had no idea how you were going to get around it, how you were going to get over it, to know that Jesus still today will make sure that that stone gets rolled away, that when you get to the other side, you will know that he is still the risen Savior. Boy, isn't that good. Listen, I hope that God would bless you, bless your family on this wonderful resurrection morning. I hope that God is an inspiration through Jesus Christ, his son, through his holy and precious word. Whatever preacher you listen to today, whatever part of the Bible that you read, whatever family Bible study that you have, let it be known that Jesus is still the risen Savior. Amen? Amen. 
For those of you who are watching by Facebook or maybe on YouTube, uh, whatever way, whatever medium that you're using to watch this, I know for our particular people with the coronavirus and different things that are going on, uh, you still want to support the ministry. You want to be a part of what God is doing. You can always come to the Facebook page, cdriftcommunitychurch.org. Uh, you can see the sermons that are there. You can see what's going on, the latest news, the different things. And if you would like to support the ministry, let me just, just tell you this. Uh, sometimes it's with money. Praise God. I, I hope that he leads you that way. Uh, but it's also with other things. And I ask God to lead you this way as well. Sometimes the support that we need is through prayer. Please pray for us. We need the prayer. We're trying to do some different things with the ministry that we might be able to reach out to Sea Drift. Let the people of Sea Drift know that we love them. Uh, we can definitely use a prayer that whatever doors God chooses to open, whatever ones he chooses to walk through, whatever stones that he decides to move out of the way, we want to reach Sea Drift and let them know also that Jesus is still the risen Savior. Please pray for us. Put your, your tithe of time uh, your your efforts, your talents, whatever it might be, that you might help us to carry the gospel of Jesus Christ to a dying and a lost world. May God bless you. May he keep you. And remember once again, that when you leave, when you go with God, you can't go wrong. Amen? Amen. And have a wonderful resurrection morning. Hallelujah.